But in the meantime, te in the meantime, telecom major Bharti Airtel reported its fourth quarter earnings yesterday. The India business met estimates while the consolidated numbers were a miss because of a weak performance from the Africa business. Balaji Subramaniam, who's the vice president at IFL Securities, joins us now to talk about that. Balaji, good morning and thanks for joining in. You know, the India business has been growing very well, not just for Bharti, but for almost all the uh, you know large players in this sector. Uh, but for Bharti Airtel particularly, um, what is your expectation as far as subscriber editions are concerned? Do you think they can build on to what they did in this quarter? And also, what's your view on the stock? Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, uh, so, uh, Bharti's uh, uh, India performance was quite healthy. It continued to uh, maintain its momentum. Uh, uh, especially the subscriber editions were a bit stronger than what we saw in the preceding quarters. And, uh, you know, even if you look at the internals, uh, be it uh, postpaid subscribers or 4G subscribers, so um, it was a, a pretty healthy performance. Uh, I think going forward, uh, the subscriber addition mo momentum should uh, continue uh, to some extent. Uh, but I would think that ARPU would be a bigger uh, a growth driver for uh, Bharti rather than subscriber additions. Uh, and as far as the ARPU is concerned, uh, uh, you know, uh, I would expect uh, a pretty significant tariff hike uh, sometime uh, in the, uh, sometime later this year, uh, maybe post elections. Uh, so that should uh, result in uh, uh, ARPU and subscriber, uh, ARPU and uh, revenue growth uh, remaining strong. Uh, <clears throat> Balaji, hi, morning. Uh... Uh, Prashant here. You know, yesterday there was that story which said uh, expected 25% increase in your phone bill. So when you say substantial increase, uh, something to that uh, magnitude? So, you know, I don't know whether, you know, what, what, over what period can, uh, uh, you know, this 25% increase in the phone bill happen. But I think uh, something like a uh, uh, 15 to 20 percent uh, uh, headline tariff increase is uh, uh, looking, uh, you know, quite plausible, uh, uh, especially you know in the in the second half of uh, this year. Of course, there would be uh, some down trading, but you know, net net, uh, I think uh, uh, the industry revenue should uh, uh, grow in uh, somewhere in the uh, uh, mid teens uh, or even high teens uh, for uh, FI25. Uh, and you know, twenty five percent. See, the, the I think one way to look at it is that uh, uh, this industry, the industry ARPU or even even Bharti's ARPU for that matter, uh, it used to be around uh, one ninety five two hundred rupees way back in two thousand sixteen, and uh, you know, eight years have passed, and even today uh, it has uh, barely touched two hundred and ten. So that would probably be you know, in terms of uh, real terms, uh, you know, uh, ARPU has significantly come off, and uh, mobile subscription subscriber revenue as a percentage of consumption expenditure, uh, that has also uh, substantially come off. And even if one were to assume a 25% increase in uh, the phone bills, I think, you know, it should still be well short of where uh, we were uh, eight years back. All right. Hi, Balaji. Good morning and good to see you in Nigel on this side. You know, I want to ask you about the other Bharti. That's Bharti Hexacom. It reported its results. You know, from the time it's listed, the stock has just rocketed. I don't know, 900 rupees, what do you do with the stock? Uh, I'm afraid I won't be able to comment on Hexagon. Okay, all right. Uh, then in terms of preference, because even Bharti Airtel, you know, the stock has seen a big, big run in the last one year or so. How do you approach the stock? So I think in the near term, there should be, you know, uh, a flurry of positive development. So first is the uh, uh, lively increase in uh, tariff, uh, which might uh, happen uh, in the next uh, two to three months post elections. And uh, the next could be, you know, what happens on the AGR uh, uh, dues. Uh, because if you recollect uh, in October, uh, both Bharti and Vodafone Idea uh, had... Uh, uh, filed a curative plea uh, against the uh, AGR verdict and uh, if the Supreme Court, you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 permits uh, the DOT and the telcos to uh, 
do a reconciliation, uh, uh, you know, that can be positive because if you uh, recall what happened in 2020 was that when the telcos did self-assessment, uh, their own dues were uh, about 50-60% uh, lower compared to what uh, DOT had uh, served them with. Uh, so, you know, if there is a positive development on that front, you know, that also uh, should uh, help the, uh, you know, uh, should, uh, that should also support the stock. So, uh, I would say, you know, the near-term outlook is, uh, you know, fairly positive. Even though, you know, I, I would also concede that after the uh, significant rally that we have seen in the last uh, six months, uh, you know, a part of that uh, optimism is already built into the price. Uh, the only problem, I think, is what's happening in Africa, right, Balaji? Because, I mean, there's a sharp devaluation of the currency, especially in places like Nigeria. So, it's really hitting Bharti's uh, Africa business. Uh, do you think that would put a spanner in the works for the stock? Or is the India business grow far outpacing the Africa business? So, shareholders shouldn't be that concerned? See, I think if you look at uh, uh, Airtel stock price, the rally has happened despite all the issues in Nigeria. Because uh, uh, in Nigeria, what has happened is a year back, the currency was at around uh, uh, 460 to the dollar. And uh, today, it's uh, almost at uh, 1400 to the dollar. So that is a massive devaluation. And of course, that has uh, uh, shown up in the Airtel Africa numbers also. But uh, Bharti Airtel stock has remained resilient dur uh, during all of this because of the uh, underlying uh, momentum in the uh, India business. Uh, I think, you know, uh, with uh, uh, all these uh, developments, uh, you know, Nigeria has become a substantially smaller proportion of the uh, overall business. And uh, let us not forget that uh, Bharti Airtel owns only 56% of uh, Airtel Africa. And uh, considering all that, I think uh, the uh, value of uh, the Africa business is uh, less than 10% of uh, the overall uh, okay. uh, consolidated valuation. So my sense is that, you know, despite the trouble in uh, Africa, the uh, strength in India should more than offset the weakness there. Okay, that's a fair point. So Africa is uh, less than 10% of the overall business. So at, at least for now, you don't need to give too much attention there. Strength in India far supersedes that. Just two quick questions before we let you go, Balaji. One is on the stock price, right? It's already seen a 40% rise in the last 3-4 months. How much more of an upside do you think uh, you can see in the stock or are we, have we reached a mature stage of the rally? And the second is there's a little bit of a niggling concern about the rising debt of Bharti. Uh, the debt is now, I think, about 20,500 crores. Um, so would that be a concern for you? Uh, okay, so uh, firstly on the stock price, uh, as I said, uh, the uh, near term uh, news flow should be positive, one on the tariff hike front and uh, the other one potentially on the AGR uh, judgment. Uh, so those two positive developments should support the stock price, even though, you know, I would think that uh, uh, a significant part of the uh, rally is already done. Uh, uh, finally, on the debt. Uh, see, the thing is, uh, if you look at um, uh, their uh, net debt to EBITDA ratio, uh, uh, it's uh, around 2.6 times. And uh, that has been, you know, uh, it, it has, uh, so the thing is, it, it, it has been steadily falling. And uh, in the last couple of quarters, that fall has not been that much because of the fact that there has been uh, some, uh, you know, EBITDA has been flat at the overall level because of the issues in Nigeria. But if you look at the FCF generation, it has been, been, uh, pretty strong for uh, uh, Bharti and uh, as uh, we see uh, tariff hikes in future, uh, a, a significant uh, part of that should flow down, uh, flow through as EBITDA and I think the peak capex here is already behind us. FI24 saw a significant increase in capital expenditure on rural 4G rollouts and 5G rollouts but uh, in FI25 that capex number should also come down. So, a combination of EBITDA growth and a reduction in capex should ensure that uh, the FCF generation substantially improves from here on. And that should mean that uh, the net debt to EBITDA uh, ratio also should uh, uh, fall uh, pretty quickly. Okay. All right. Uh, Balaji, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Great speaking with you. And uh, I really appreciate you coming on as always.